It's a crisp, sunny December morning. Somewhere on an Air Force base in the American Southwest, I'm on faded astroturf, surrounded by strangers. The air is quiet. They are staring at me. And for a second, I stare back. Not one of them speaks English. And it's my job right now to tell these 40 Afghan kids they are welcomed, loved, supported, <clears throat> capable, strong, important. I take a big breath, smile, and say nothing. Instead, I toss a soccer ball in the air and happily watch as the kickoff of connection happens instantly before my eyes. Sport is a universally relatable part of life, but soccer, the beautiful game, uniquely functions as a universal language. This is something I've learned in, over the years running the nonprofit I founded, Refugee Soccer. Our mission is to use soccer to create many more moments of hope and happiness around the world just like this. Half the world's population, four billion with a B people, perhaps including you and for sure including me, are soccer fans. Contrast that with the historically high number with the historically high number of displaced people or refugees in the world today. More than 100 million of our fellow humans have been forced to flee their homes due to war, persecution, and general chaos that has at least disrupted, if not forever, changed their lives. Their homelands became too hostile to stay, and they were forced to seek refuge in other countries, often involving brutal, dangerous journeys that tragically not everyone survives. For nearly 50 years, the USA, home of the largest resettlement program in the world, has welcomed more than 3 million refugees, roughly the same number of people living here in Utah. <clears throat> <clears throat> One of these refugees now lives safely not far from here. His name is Tamim. He is really, really good at soccer. In 2021, Tamim and his family were on the last US military plane out of Kabul as the country fell to the Taliban. He experienced the unimaginable panic that gripped his homeland the day they fled for their lives. Tamim's story is as moving and inspirational as it is raw and tragic. That day, at one of the last open gates at the Kabul airport, heavily guarded, of course, a stampede of thousands of desperate Afghans broke out as they tried to get through the gate, just hoping to catch a plane to safety. In the stampede, Tamim, and his, Tamim was knocked to the ground and separated from his mother. He heard her screaming and willed himself up to find her. As he, made his way, as he made his way to her, he passed over children killed in the chaos. He reached his mother, regrouped, and made the final short but crucial distance to safety. This chilling moment painfully captures the all too common risks born and tragedies experienced every day all around the world by newly created refugees. With staggering numbers and harrowing stories like this, it can feel overwhelming to want to help, but not know how to help. But once a refugee has found safety, shelter, and food, the next most vital need they have as a human is to belong. And at our core, isn't that what we all want? Refuge from trauma and pain, to just belong. This is where soccer comes into play. With so many fans around the world, soccer is considered the world sport. The accessibility to the game, all you need is something resembling a ball and a pile of rocks or old tires to mark the goals, is to me what makes soccer so beautiful. Because access to the game by so many powerfully binds diverse people together. Teams form, relationships grow, and healing becomes possible. And the sheer size of soccer's global fan base means there are virtually limitless possibilities for real human connection. This excites me because it means there are virtually limitless possibilities for real human connection. This excites me because it makes the huge number of refugees seem less overwhelming and the complicated problem of exclusion more addressable. I'd like to share with you one radical idea. Words matter, but communication matters more. We live in a world today where it seems like we are drowning in a sea of too many words, while the value of communication continues to sink. It's as though we are spraying polarizing and toxic language everywhere, which only, set, which only deepens the divide between us. What if using fewer words could improve communication and create more belonging and understanding for all of us? It can. And you don't even have to love soccer to try this in your life. This, in fact, this idea is as simple and universal as the game itself, a game that demands 
communication and teamwork to perform well. A study published a decade ago by MIT's Human Dynamics Laboratory both surprised and motivated me with this idea around communication and the work we do with teams. The implications for hacking belonging in the context of the growing refugee crisis are really compelling. Researchers who did the study found that the answer to what makes a team's communication most effective lies not in what is said, but in how it is said. And the primary takeaway of the study, that the most important predictor of a team's success is its communication patterns. According to the study, there are three elements of communication that most impact team performance energy, engagement, and exploration. Belonging, the glue that binds communities big and small, is created through personal interactions. This direct human connection occurs naturally on the soccer field. But off the field, where, where you and I find ourselves probably every day, we can apply this reframing of communication to our families, coworkers, and neighbors by focusing on our energy, engagement, and exploration. On the soccer field, an exchange of energy could be a gesture clearly meaning, pass the ball, I'm open. Actually getting the pass and, return and thanking the teammate for it with a thumbs up or a smile builds trust. Importantly, this brief, wordless exchange energizes the entire team to see the benefit of passing. Off the soccer field, a pass could simply be smiling at someone in your community who doesn't look like you. It takes a split second to connect this way. And how good does it feel when that pass of positive energy is received with a reciprocal smile? And better yet, then passed on to someone else. On any team, one, one member's individual skills contribute to the team's overall performance. Of course, in soccer, there is solo dribbling, and it can be remarkable to watch. But it's the passing or engagement that makes or breaks a team. This is because with crisp, effective passing, the team can move farther down the field faster towards the goal. And while usually not enough for American crowds, when a goal actually results from all that passing, fans lose their minds with excitement, and you can literally feel the energy. And that energy bonds the team more closely. The same is true off the field when we engage community members with different life experiences. The goal or successful outcome in this case is newfound perspective and mutual respect. So, be curious about the stories of refugees. Ask questions. Really listen and observe. Share your experiences and connect as fellow humans on the, way of, on the journey of life. I believe this is one of the best antidotes we have to the disease of exclusion that our world faces. And all this engagement starts with a simple pass. No words needed. This third element Exploration is where the really good stuff happens at refugee soccer, when we organize friendly matches between kids from diverse communities. The bonding that occurs at these friendly matches is one of the purest examples of team building I've ever seen. With no words at all, two teams that have never played together, let alone talked, share their love of soccer as soon as cleats are tied and uniforms put on. The understanding is instant, the respect evident, and the connections bonding. At one of the first friendly matches we organized here in Salt Lake City, I was blown away by the sight of teenage boys living vastly different lives, Exchange, exchanging a few hugs and posing after the match for selfies in this joint team photo. I am sure that none of these boys or their parents or coaches will forget this day. And I use this powerful image to drive me to continually create more moments like this. When you connect with the refugee, do something with them. You don't have to play soccer with them, obviously, but there is so much richness waiting for all of us in working with and serving people from diverse places that are often the subject of gripping global headlines. The thing is, as humans, we tend to interact mostly, if not exclusively, with people who look, think, and speak like we do. We all do this. And when we do, we also inadvertently leave out valuable team members and miss the opportunity to open our eyes, hearts, and minds to new ideas, experiences, and friendships. This past holiday season, another young Afghan refugee named Salim joined teammates from his new club to help deliver food collected for five newly arrived Afghan families. 
I should point out here that every refugee who enters the U.S. legally is eligible to receive one-time assistance of about $2,000 from the State Department. This assistance for food, furniture, clothing, etc., is intended to help the refugee get settled in their first 90 days here while awaiting work authorization. And six months after arrival, they are required to start repaying the transportation costs incurred when coming to the U.S., usually thousands of dollars. The bottom line is this resettlement assistance is certainly beneficial, but often inadequate for these new neighbors who are completely starting their lives over in a land where they rarely know anyone or even speak the language. And they are doing all of this while trying to manage the emotional and sometimes physical trauma of fleeing the unimaginable conditions of their homeland. So I'm sure you can imagine that these families were truly grateful for the, for the assistance they received from this club. This is the part of the story where the magic of what we do, what we all can do, revealed itself to these young soccer players. At one of the homes, Salim's teammate, a 15-year-old young man, noticed that this particular family was really struggling. In addition to scarcely having any food, they literally had nothing but beds, no other furniture, no kitchenware. The family asked for nothing. The teammate said nothing to the family. Rather, he reported the situation back to his coach and started to advocate for a family he just met for the club to find a way to help them immediately. Just a few days later, this family received a new couch and kitchen essentials provided by the club. Beyond the obvious comfort and aid this was to the family, consider the significance of noticing and then acting on an opportunity to make a passive service. Equally impactful was how motivated this young man who made the pass and witnessed the successful goal must be to make another pass and then hopefully another. This is how you create teams and communities through soccer using very few words and lots of energy, engagement, and exploration. No government assistance required, no red tape, just humans from two different worlds brought together for a common goal and easing, even if just a little, our mutual journeys through life. Whether we are seeking to create soccer teams of refugee and established kids, dynamite teams of super productive salespeople, or more welcoming and engaged communities, remember, words matter less these days. If you aren't already hustling down the field of belonging, sharing your heart and energy, I invite you to join me to help create more teams and communities of inclusion. Refugee kids, family members, coworkers and neighbors are just waiting for someone to lead with some meaningful action and love unique to the team dynamic. The historic times in which we live are calling for us, you and me, to take our shot on goal for the millions of teammates around the world without a homeland. And warmly welcome them home into our neighborhoods and into our lives. Let's go. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>